my name is Gareth McNabb. I'm Social Innovation Lead at Nationwide Building Society. Um, that uh, meant that uh, over the course of 2019, I was co-leading the Open Banking for Good uh, program of work where uh, we were looking to work with uh, fintechs and charities to use open banking uh, to power products and services to serve the financially squeezed. Perhaps controversially for this session, um, we didn't want to advance anyone through who was seeking to lend money because there's more to financial inclusion than simply lending more, pe more money to more people. There's an awful lot of work to do to make sure that this technology uh, can service can serve uh, people's wider financial needs, like uh, getting on top of saving, ensuring they're properly insured, and that they can generally just keep on top of the money. I know an awful lot of people in the audience will already be persuaded by that, um, and so I don't know that I'm going to rattle too many cages. Uh, but I think the um, the main thing that I want to um, explore this afternoon would be um, how can we make sure that further um, innovation is properly informed by the end users um, as well as the funders. In terms of how open banking is affecting this area, um, if I maybe talk to the mainstream credit bit, uh, which is um, it, it should have affected it more and it's going to need to, I think. So what do I mean? Um, with the regulator being really clear in the last couple of years, particularly with the close down of some of the larger um, uh, rent to own or high cost short term credit providers, where the criticism has been, you've assessed credit worthiness, but you haven't assessed affordability. The regulators become very, very clear that they expect lenders of all types to assess both. Um, now, they haven't specified how, uh, uh, whether you get them to fill in a form or you use open banking, or you can use some algorithms and, uh, and assessments of what's a reasonable cost of living for somebody in your part of the country, that kind of thing. Um, your mainstream lenders still rely heavily on the CRA data to lend, um, which means they rely heavily on assessing credit worthiness over against affordability and their methods of assessing affordability will be many and varied, but very few of them are using open banking to supplement that. What's in it for them, right? Uh, they've got the balance sheet, they've got the access to markets, they've got the branch networks, they've got the digital channels. Um, how aggressively do they need to grow the consumer credit, their share of the consumer credit market? Um, yes, there are underserved segments of society, um, but a private enterprise doesn't have a legal responsibility to meet unmet needs, do they? They need to manage their own risks. They want to achieve their own um, commercial goals. So, so I suppose it does come from a what's in it for them. Now, I think what's in it for them is, look, you've got some old mistakes. You've got some old um, life events. Life, like, it's not always... I bought too big a telly, is it? Sometimes it's, uh, I got made redundant. Like it's, you can experience financial difficulty because of things you do and things that are done to you. Uh, and so I think um, for businesses that are reliant upon consumer credit lending, as mainstream lenders uh, are, um, they're gonna need to be more creative in how they assess credit worthiness and affordability in order to keep that market share. So I, I think until now, they've not needed it. But um, as the marketplace becomes more competitive and, uh, and as those credit files themselves begin to deteriorate, but the affordability may be there in lumps and bumps in the marketplace. Uh, I don't know necessarily that it's the financial inclusion aspect of things that will drag mainstream lenders into um, more wide use of this technology. I think it may be simply in their own commercial interest to keep pace with where they would have been had there not been a crisis uh, that hopefully will lead to the adoption of the technology. From my point of view, I don't much mind about what makes them do it, as long as they get on and do it. Um, I would love to see it come from a real commitment uh, to um, uh, financial inclusion and financial well-being. Um, but a better use of the technology means uh, more people rightly receiving uh, credit and financial services when they need it. with the forbearance that I suppose the bigger lenders have been most impacted by. One in seven residential mortgages were on a payment holiday over the course of the summer. Um, and while it's understandable that the requirement was that that shouldn't impact your credit file any, at the end of the day, that's an awful lot of this population going to 2021, having taken up to half of the year off of making their largest single monthly payment. Um, consumer credit providers the right across the market, including the mainstream, will have a question mark against 
a credit file that reads perfectly clear, but one in seven took a payment holiday. They'll have a question mark about what did you do with the money and, and why, why would you now need to lend more on this line, borrow more on this line? Um, and so I, I think it would be right. I think it would be really helpful. And that could be the impetus we need to encourage mainstream lenders to op open their eyes to this open data uh, more so that they can make better informed decisions, satisfy their own questions about, well, yeah, well but what did you do during the lockdown or um, what actually is your income state? The only way for them to know that for sure will be open banking data. That kind of information can be deduced or worked out roughly from CRA data, but they're going to need to use open banking. So my hope would be that um, going into 2021, the post-pandemic world is the, is the reason why mainstream lenders adopt this technology more. The revolution started. Um, it absolutely isn't over. Um, there are many more possibilities still to be explored, but also some problems potentially. Um, if we categorize the data to a certain level of detail, it gives you the opportunity to discriminate like crazy and not lend to people who go to the pub five times a month if you, if you determine that's a risk. Uh, what, what types of behavior will you as a lender determine to be in appetite and outside of appetite? The same mistakes that maybe the mainstream lenders might be accused to have made by relying overly on CRA data may now be replicated by relying on what you think you see in the current account transaction data. So be careful, your prejudices might come out. So watch out for the problems. And with the rush to market, it's great that the, um, the, there's an acceleration, new people coming to the market. My hope would also be that those companies are robust enough to uh, work in the increasingly regulated environment, particularly with the follow-up support that some vulnerable customers need when lending goes wrong.